Eight was eight is Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Alright, yeah. so this is nine. This episode nine. nine. Damn, for the amount of shit that we've been doing, this shit's only nine. Dog, we've been doing so much work. Dog, dog so much fucking work. These Samaro is on Showtime now. Dog, they left Viceland. That's they that's probably offered crazy. them a crazy bag. Dog, that's wild. They probably offered them like million dollar deals. Heck yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah. yeah. Our bet. Nice, <clears throat> nice, 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 nice. Let me All see right. if I can hear myself properly. Just gotta so, keep it like right here so that. Well, uh, you ready to go, my friend? Yeah, you're recording. It's recording, right? All yeah, right. when it's when it's solid, you're recording. Yeah. All right, so wait, per hold tradition. On, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. We're gonna do everything. All right, go ahead, go ahead. All right. Per tradition, it's time for the clap. You ready, Andre? Yeah. We're gonna count. To, we're gonna count go. to three. Yeah. And we're going to clap after three. Not on three, but after three. So on the four. Yeah. On the four. On four. On four. <laughs> but we, I'm not going to say four, though, so don't wait for shit. One, <laughs> two, three. Not now. That was a test. All right. All right. But now we're going to do that. <laughs> we're going to do that one. We're going to do that one. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> That's right, swimming. Got my throat closing up. All right. <laughs> one, two, three. Dang, I think I probably clapped early, but it's all it's good. Okay. <laughs> we, That's fine. It happens every time. Ooh, 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 every ooh, single ooh. time. Yeah, we on it. We on it. Welcome Ain't back shit. to the 200 Podcast. This is Joseph and... Aline. And our guest, good friend... Andre Wisdom. All right. Give him a little background on yourself, Mr. Wisdom. Uh, background on myself. Um, I rap. I... Uh, Produce, engineer, um, you know, create, and yeah, that's pretty much. That's what's up, bro. So where are you from? Uh, where do you live? Like, not your address or anything, but you know, <laughs> where's what's your journey been like so far, man? What you been up to? Yeah, man. I, um, I'm from Bowie, Maryland. Uh, right now I live in Atlanta, Georgia, Fulton County. Um, you know. I moved out there around September for real. Uh, been staying out there for a while. But I'm back home right now for this last month. It's been cool, you know, seeing everybody, you know, making moves, trying to work on music every day. I've been back and, and you know, staying on top of it for real. Yeah. That's what's up, man. Yeah. yeah. I known Daryl since like high school and shit. Facts. Yeah. <laughs> but, Facts. Um, yeah. So, like, what really got you going with, like, Rapping, so why rap? Why rap? Shit. Damn, why rap? Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I mean, you know, you know, like, uh, you know, like, shit just choose you, like, like, like the reason, like, you know, you probably do filmography, mm-hmm. and the reason, you know, y'all both study film, and, and and you know, you create. It's like, it's sort of like one day you just do something, and then it kind of just stick with you. Yeah. And then you, That's very true. And, you and the love grow with it, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah, that's so. What's up, man. Yeah. What's up, yeah. But, like, it's, it's just weird how that stuff just, like, kind of manifests it, you know? Because, I mean, like, everybody tries to do something, and then you know when something's just not for you. Right. And then there's a lot of people who just don't know what's for them, and then, like, they just continue to try to do it, you know? That's scary, though, yeah. bro. Yeah. To, like, not know what's for you, you know? Like, I don't know, bro. Some I be feeling like I be feeling like grateful that yeah. I I found like music, mm-hmm. cause I know a lot of people that don't know they that don't know what they want to do in life. Yeah. And it's kind of like you can't really tell nobody else, hey, bro. I think you should do this. Well, you should do this. You could be like mm-hmm. you suggest it, but you know. No, you can keep going. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can keep going. Oh, oh my bad. No, my I just bad. have the timer set. Just yeah, so I don't yeah. Go over it. But yeah, yeah, but, yeah, you know, like, I don't know, bro. That that's a scary thought though. That like, not know what you want to do. And then you just end up just sucking yourself into something that just doesn't suit you. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you know, it's like there's so many things that I could do, but like, 
knowing that is a little scary because like you're like damn it would be so easy for me to do this but i'm really called to do this even though this is so hard yeah. like why do i have to want to do this that's so hard when there's so many options that are way easier that's very true who am i to say that something doesn't suit another person regardless yeah. of what they come out with you know yeah. and like that's how I always felt, though. Just, no, like, what I chose true. to do is so difficult that I'm just, like, I'm so grateful that I have, you know, that I do have that feeling of purpose, whatever. But mm-hmm. sometimes you just want to wake up in the morning and already have shit mapped out, you know, and just move with the flow and kind of just, like, take the steps that you know are going to get you to point A, B, and C. Yeah. But that is not the life that I live. Unfortunately, <laughs> not. but it's cool though. I'm yeah. I mean, it's worth it. You know what it I mean? Is. Like in the long yeah. run, I already know I have that in my cut. In my, yeah. 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 Like hearing it from like we we I'm Joe and I we lose sight like not sidetrack but we like kind of lose sight of that thought. Like you know, people come here and they're like, damn, y'all really on your ish. You know, y'all really doing this. Y'all doing that. Blah blah blah. But like, I mean, I guess this is how we perceive progress is what really like has us like kind of tied to you know how we do things but um but yeah you know just going at it each and every day and just you know being just optimistic to like knowing in the long run that like you know somehow i know what we're doing now gonna pay off so yeah that's pretty much it yeah so how'd you get to atlanta man you didn't just teleport there what's the reason behind it you know what i mean what's the motivator why why atl i know you see the dmv kind of like coming up dmv what's going on yeah Uh, yeah man um uh, you know i I can't really talk about like why i went to atlanta but but i went to atlanta you know uh just to help out and stuff like that. Okay. And um, so it wasn't like I ain't like Maryland, nothing like that. Like, I like it here. Like, this like my home for real. Yeah, okay. You know? So I, I didn't feel like I had to go to Atlanta, like, work on music or nothing like that. You okay. know? Okay. It wasn't, it wasn't nothing like that for All right. Me. Yeah. Because we have, we have a friend, Sean. Sean went out to Atlanta. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sean went oh, to you Atlanta. Know Sean too. You yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, y'all know Sean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. y'all be linking down there? Nah, 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 nah. Yeah. Bro, I ain't talked to that man. Oh, yeah, yeah, nah, nah. But I, I knew he lived out there because, um, damn, bro. DJ? Uh, who? Uh, you talking about DJ, right? His man? No? Or someone else? Oh, somebody told me he lived. Somebody somebody was like, somebody was like, you know, Sean Rap, and he lived out of Atlanta, too. Oh, okay, and he, okay, he, okay. Somebody was like, yeah, y'all should link. I'm like, all right, uh, bet. Okay, but I don't okay. know none of his socials, you know, none yeah, of that shit. Yeah, so it's just yeah. like, but I know he lived out there, he you know? There, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he went out there for rapping. So I was like, anybody that I hear like does anything creative and they say they went to Atlanta, <laughs> like I'm just gonna be like, oh damn, they probably went out there to just self seek artistic endeavors. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean the DMV, like we just like it's, it's coming it's up, coming, man. Bro, like DMV coming up. We trying to get on that. Right we trying to get yeah. on that train too. So all y'all artists, <laughs> come on this platform. Let's ride y'all bandwagon. We trying to get that bag. <laughs> it's like nah. <laughs> He ain't joking. <laughs> I ain't joking though. I ain't joking, but I am joking. <laughs> I ain't joking, but I am. But yeah. yeah but yeah, man. Like, it's just interesting to see how things are like formulating right now. It's weird a little bit. It is. It, it's not like bad weird. It's like really good. It's like a good weird just to see how like the tone is being set. You know, you got Rico Nasty, you got Shh, Beautiful. Dope. And no. like you know, like they are he went making to with us. He went, yeah, 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 all he went like with went us. in PG County. Yeah, not, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like in yeah. PG County, like yeah. you know, and it just really like you I know. I think a lot of pe- people with talent, though. A lot of people from PG with talent, I think, fell by the wayside too, and I think that holds us back. By, like, by like a lot of people, when you think about it, like those formative years when you're in high school and after the years we're in right now, it's like. All those choices that you make can kind of like direct your potential in which, wherever, whichever way you go in life. Mm-hmm. So if you're fucking around a lot, even though your potential might show through some uh, art that you make or through your like academic endeavors or sports or whatever the case may be, those other choices are gonna overpower that. And I've seen so much raw potential in like PG that has been kind of like just consumed by the culture because there's so much going on out there you just can kind of get lost in like yeah. the fun of it all because there's so many cool people you so just you get like it people don't work on their craft enough. yeah i just feel like people don't work on themselves enough like they just don't really take the time to figure out what do i need to do yeah. you know they just kind of like 
keep moving with all the great stuff going on around them. They soak it in instead of trying to figure out what they can add to it. Right, right. You know, and I think we're starting to see like the pushback, pushback of that because everybody think about like the go-go years when like and when we were too young to really go to go-go's. Uh, when did you graduate high school? 2015. 2015, right? yeah, 2015 yeah. yeah. So like we were hearing about go-go's, but we weren't old enough to go, and all that culture was being produced, but. Like people were just taking from it, sucking on it, sucking on it, and nobody was really like giving more back. So then That's now true. we're in a period where like, I feel like we're the new generation, but oh, we're yeah. kind of like yeah, making that new way. We're giving, because there's nothing to, to like motivate us anymore, to inspire us, nothing new at least. We're kind of making that push to really like test our limits and do what we can to bring the best out of the people around us, you know, our community. So. I don't know. That's just kind of where I see the DMV the going. DMV. Yeah. But I don't know what y'all think. No, I mean, I, I, in, a, in a way, I would say it's that it's different because Go-Go was, like, from the ground up. I mean, Chuck Brown. That's what I'm saying. You know? Right, right. And, like, with the music scene now, it's just, like, it, it is a new wave, but it's not something original, I don't think. Like, the way, like, we're being represented uh, if you would like to bring up the names that like are representing like the DMV culture now, I wouldn't say. I'm not saying that the people aren't original, but like the things that they're producing isn't necessarily anything that's like to the length of Go Go. Mm. You feel me? But what I'm saying, I'm not saying that music is gonna be the leader of that forefront like it was before. I'm saying there are gonna be other arts that are gonna like push that culture forward. Because I'm sure while Gogo was going on, there's a lot of other stuff like visual art, all types of things. Oh, I see what you mean. And I'm okay. saying just that whole feeling of like this is a hotbed for people who want to, you know, grow creatively. Yeah. Uh, I was gonna say like so so basically what you're saying is y'all remember when Gogo was hot, y'all saying that y'all don't think that the music, that the community comes together for like other genres like they did with Gogo. I'm just saying that it was it felt more like it felt more like. Um, there was always shit going on, like something was going on, mm. where people were performing at like a high level. Yeah. You know, and now I, I feel like for a little while, maybe when we were getting older in high school and stuff, like our later years in high school, there wasn't really like a lot of people performing at a super high level in music and in like the other genres as a I whole. Yeah, from the yeah. DMV I as mean, a whole. Okay. Of course, you always have people who are talented who are going to stand out. Yeah. But I mean, like, as a whole movement, whole like, movement. Yeah. it doesn't even, Gogo was worldwide. But I'm talking about something that's p powerful within, like, the DMV. I'm not even worried about other people. I'm, I'm trying to think, because, all right, because I remember when I was younger, right? And it was Gogo. -Go, it was all Gogo -Go for real. And this was, like, before Wale. You know, this is, like, before them. You had, like, a few local rappers. I don't even remember their names. And then like, See, that's the point. <laughs> but but then yeah. Wale came, uh -huh. and then I remember uh, Trail came, yeah. Light Show yeah. came, Glizzy came, and then you had like local dudes. I don't know if y'all know y'all read a Writer's Block. I yeah, it was it was Manny, uh -huh. uh, Jalen, uh, KJ. Oh wow. They they had a group. They okay. they was tight. Um, we like like well, at least for me like I always like knew like the local artists you know like like just people around me so yeah. like I'd be like. Like my brother EJ or, or Julian or Zay or whoever else, Madlock, you know, like we, like our, it was always people around me that was doing music. Doing music, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so yeah. I always felt like, I always felt like, okay, you know, we got enough, uh, we got enough around us to do it, yeah. even if we like may never get like a look. A look we yeah. we got enough talent to pull people in, and we different enough to do it. You I know? see, I see, I know what you mean. So there was like a driving force to like you felt like, all right, since there's people that you know that's really pushing to like be rappers that kind of like gave you that sight that like damn you know like all right there's a way i can make it from this so your outlook on like the music scene and the dmv you felt like there were people really doing shit versus like us we weren't really dialing into it we were just seeing like you know just the wale and just yeah, like you yeah. know like uh or the go-go um you know wave or whatever so yeah, yeah. I, I see what you mean it was a lot of uh it was a lot of indie artists. I remember this one yeah. nigga, his name was uh, Jay Otto. He had a song called Life. Mm -hmm. I used to snatch all the time. Well, it was, it's just like, it was like a whole bunch of like, um, they was all older than us. Like, they was like, this probably I was like in 
middle school, they was like in the high school, See, like early middle college. School, I did not know like, anything about like any DMV artists like that right, at right. all. You know, because it I mean? wasn't it was it wasn't in your face. Like yeah, like, like, like now, inter- yeah, that's now what I'm saying. you just get on Twitter and you and you, exactly. you have like fan you have like dmv fan you know how like in middle school you had like bait pages and shit yeah. like that bro they got the dmv music plug yeah, the now dmv music plug yeah, yeah, yeah there's a yeah, page yeah, like yeah. the dmv and music just, plug and you see so many DM- artists now what? so many artists Facts. so now if you're like a rapper you got a little clown in dmv you'll be on that page and you're well, well yeah, I think they accept pay. payments. Yeah, like you can, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> bro, that's promotion. You <laughs> hey, got nah, to, nah, 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 son. The I got you, and then like I'm yeah. not trying to get sidetracked, but just to add this a part of the conversation, Pe- okay, people want to kind of like downplay you putting money into your craft. That's nah, putting money into your craft. You you promotion. You, you need to pay. You need to invest money to an extent for you to really get that back. Man, like had, studio sessions, yeah. promotions. Those are all things to really invest into an artist. And, and people will look that kind of wrong. Too, so it's like he's really yeah, the DMV yeah, music yeah. plug. He'll post you on the on the page, and then like the people will see. And yeah, there's a lot of. It's like really giving exposure for like a lot of up and coming so artists. Any, uh, anything changed for you? Hell yeah, man! I remember like last year I dropped a session for the Wise. And I remember uh, I did a video for a joint called You Got Me, and I Ain't Fucking With You, right? Yeah. Is that the one Andy did? Yeah, no. yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah, don't yeah. fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good yeah. Look, bro. Yeah, that yeah. don't fire, man. I'm going to watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout yeah. out Andy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Andy. Shout out to Andy. You got to get Andy boy on the <laughs> jump. <laughs> Conflict, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, but yeah, man, he, uh, yeah, he shot that joint, and um, I put a, I, I put like little $50, like $40, $50 to put it on the little joint. Mm-hmm. That joint got like 200 retweets. Like people's in my mentions, like damn, bro, I ain't know you could rap like this. Wow. Like I, my 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 streams went up, like and then and and it's and I feel like uh, I feel like that's what's missing for the joint. I just dropped station number one. Mm-hmm. Is I ain't I, I haven't brought people into my world yet. Like like I know as an artist, you know um, when you create, you you kind of just want to put it out. You know you don't really you don't really want to harp on it for too long because. Mm-hmm. Cause it's it's kind of like in the moment, you know, it's a feeling. And, yeah. and what I learned about my music was, if I be having like spontaneous <laughs> feelings, right? So if I hold on to them for for so long, I become obsessed with them. You know, I don't move on as quick. Mm. And so like with the, with the station demos, it's more like um, I got an idea for an album. I want to make an album called Soul in the Station. And and I don't feel like I don't feel like I had the resources to do it yet. I don't feel like have a big enough fan base to reach the people I want to reach yet. Yeah. I don't even feel like my songwriting skills is is high enough to even to even execute the idea the, the right way I want to. So what I'm doing is I'm doing station demos and I'm just working on songwriting, being more consistent and getting out different energies and feelings. Yeah, okay. And, and so basically I feel like uh I feel like once I shoot videos for these joints and and bring people into my world to understand them more. Yeah. But that's why like pages like that is important because, cause I, like a, if you don't have like a big fan base like me, right? Like yeah. I don't have a big fan base. Yeah, we don't either. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Three views. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but nah, it's it's like, you know, you um, you you look for like the plug. You know, you look for like somebody that's gonna put you on and and at least put you in a position where people will be like, who who is this? Bro. I messed with this. I didn't even know this existed. Yeah. You know? That way you heard. You know? Hey, man. You're on it. Keep doing you. Yeah, man, Real bro. Because, like, you've been rapping. You've been doing this rap stuff forever. You're the first, like, really the first, like, person. Or one of the first. Like, when I was in school, that was really, like, cold-heartedly, like, really, like, pre- like really going after rap. Really? Yeah. Like, Damn. he was doing this since high school. That's what I'm saying. Like, the whole, what we were talking about earlier, like, the whole the rap, rap battling. Yeah, we used to rap Yeah, bro. Shit. Like, oh, that, that's what they were doing. So, like, you know, yeah, man. So I, I feel like you, you truly do deserve it. You know, you really, and I've been, like, you know, messing with anything you've been dropping. I haven't listened to the studio demos, though. I've been trying to listen studio to Studio demos or station demos? Station demos. Station demos. My bad. Right, station that, demos. No, nah, I was curious, because I'm going to look them up. But, um. Yeah. And the videos to what song? The one Andy did, oh, the one that you, you put. Got on, I'll be right. You got me. Yeah, yeah. All right, bet. Um, yeah, man. I can pick this one up. Hmm? You can pick this. Yeah, yeah, you can go. Uh, yeah. Is that a good idea? Let me think about editing. Let me. Th- I'm trying to think. Like, would it affect the editing? No, nah, you could pick it up. Go ahead. Yeah. 
Mic check one two. One, hey, two. hey, try and hold it away from the um the yeah, actual yeah. thing. Like hold your hand oh. down there. That's good. Yeah, yeah. It don't have to be that far down. Just so oh, it's right. not touching the uh, actual microphone. Okay. Where's the microphone at? This is the microphone. Uh, this is just the, the handle. So just as long as your hand isn't touching the microphone, you're cool. All right. Yeah, yeah, but um. You gotta hold it a little close. You might have to sit up because the cord's not long enough. All right, bet. Yeah, yeah, we in here. We in here. You're good. You wanna hear yourself? He has his headphones oh, plugged in. Hey, this shit dope. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Alright, yeah, that's. You all fuck right. with it? Yeah, yeah, I fuck with that shit. Yeah, it's super crisp. Crisp as a motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> I like that joint though because it's ambient. Yeah, 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 yeah. It makes your like voice it. super loud. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's jumped up. Our uh, videos got too long, our sessions, mm -hmm. so we started doing a timer. Okay. So that we wouldn't, because the last episode was three hours. Good Lord. Of raw footage. Three and we hours. had to edit it down. Damn. Yeah, so it was a nightmare. But I feel like people like, like, people like uh, looking at long shit if it's interesting, you know? Yeah, but it was a, it was a nightmare to edit. I don't have time. <laughs> Nigga, I work. <laughs> like, Aline works. Like, we ain't got, we're what? doing... Where do y'all work at? I work at a moving company. I move furniture. And Aleem, he's a server at a sushi restaurant. Ah. So, like, I'll work Wednesday to Saturday. Mm -hmm. And Sunday we record. Monday I'll start syncing the audio and editing and everything. Tuesday I'll keep editing. And hopefully by Tuesday I got it to a point where I can just alley-oop it to Aleem. And he can just put on the fonts and put some final touches. And then make sure everything is good to go. Do like the little uh, social media edits that he does, mm -hmm. so that it's like more marketable. And then kick it out by the next Sunday. Got you. So, so it never stops. Sunday. Yeah, this is gonna be out next Sunday. Okay, okay. Yeah, but it's cool. I, I mean, it's yeah, it's cool. You know, it's a cool process. Cool. All right. Yeah, I wanted to ask you. So, what do you feel like are the things? Cause I mean, cause you were saying earlier about like how um like you try and work on your lyrics and you don't feel like you got the right resources. I feel like now, like bro, there's people who just saying anything, bro. Oh yeah, for sure. Like all right, all right. There's this one John. I know you've seen it on the DMV music plug thing. This is everybody bang with it, calling it song of the summer from the DMV, whatever. It's just it's not even that big yet, but like, you know, I've been seeing the comments of people saying that. Yeah, yeah. So it's That's like, dope. you know, like what do you feel like, you know, I mean, just seeing things like that, knowing that like, you know, that's part of the people that you kinda like tug like, a war with like right now. Beam? Huh? I mean not you, because oh, you know yeah, they got yeah. they got like, you know just like why being Corday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, him. You remember that video I showed you, that dude who did the uh his um the remix to the Eminem, yeah, the Eminem, really yeah, he's not, he's blown up now, like, what? he's blown yeah, up, yeah, for sure. he got his own, like, No Jumper interview and all that stuff now, what? bro, he blew bro, up so quick, so crazy. off that world star hip-hop jump yeah, of that, so yeah, you know, crazy. so it's like, yeah, 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 how do you feel about that all in all, what do you feel like, you know, for you, what are the steps that you need to take, or do you feel like you should take for you to, like, really get that exposure? Everybody got their fan base, bro, yeah. like, like, like I was for real, for real, like even if I don't listen to the music, I don't be like hating on people. And it's not, and it, it's not like I don't have my critiques. Like, like it's not like I don't be like, oh yeah, bro, I shouldn't have punched him right there. Or if I was him, I would have said it this way. Or I would have wrote the beat different. Or, or I would like I mix and match the music too. So I would have mixed yeah. this. I would have mixed the vocal different. Mm, or, okay. like I have like artist critiques, but as far as like promotion and like stand, and like getting in tune with your fan base. Anybody that can do that, bro, you earn my respect. Like, that's something I have yet. I mean, I have, like, don't even I have people that follow my music. But <clears throat> from a marketing standpoint, like, sometimes it's just good to learn from these dudes because, like, because cause, cause for real, for real, and this is, what, this is what people don't really, well, not, I'm not what people understand, but, like, sometimes people have a hard time grasping. Uh, you could be talented and, and not be successful. Like, talent don't equal success, you know? Like, Very true. It, it just don't. It don't. It and, doesn't. And well, fancy. success and how on how you perceive success. <laughs> right, right. Course, how you, you know? yeah. Talent don't equal dollars. Dollars, pretty dollars. much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No talent, money talent in your pocket. Money, yeah. And it's so crazy because I was literally just I was actually I, I was talking to a man on Twitter. He said, um, hard <laughs> yeah, work. Yeah. yeah. He said hard work doesn't um uh doesn't necessarily mean I you seen that shit. go be successful. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I something that like shit. that. Yeah. I'll I'll look at it. But pretty much, and I was like, yeah, and I was like, you're right. 
and I pretty much said like strategic work beats talent if anything but not hard work within itself and then that's when yeah I mean I'm sure he he got that but like you know he went into it a little bit more but yeah it was just interesting how you bring that up because I was literally just thinking about that last week I was thinking about you know dang like hard work does not beat talent at all like you know I feel like I've been putting in work for a while and I'm sure you feel like you've been putting in work for a while as well too and it's not like you know you don't respect the work that you've been putting in it's like dang like you know you feel as though like you put in a lot and like Nothing. The dollars ain't coming. Right, <laughs> you right, know, right, straight right. up. And then straight you, up. And then you see other people, you, <laughs> you know, like, straight up. Like, damn, bro, I know he ain't put as much work in as me because yeah. because he because he he he, he slurred his word. And yeah. he, or you or you be like, or you be like, bro, he ain't even like he don't have his own studio equipment. He's yeah, still paying yeah. for studio time. Like, mm-hmm. like he just be certain stuff. But then again, like I said, it's all about finding your fan base. Like, or your fan base finding you. And if and if they and if nobody's in tune with you. Then, then it's kind of like it's kind of like you missing one of the most important elements of, of art is, is being in tune with yourself mm-hmm. and you know and if you're putting it out for other people having people being in tune with you yeah and i feel like Very that's true. what like separate like certain artists from certain like like a nigga like kanye right mm-hmm. who like hate him or love him but people be in tune with kanye you know no matter what he's doing like like if kanye came out with another album tomorrow it's going to be people that's in tune with that it's going to be people that's not but it's going to be people that's in tune with that yeah even if he wearing MAGA hats and all the little weird shit he be doing, mm-hmm. it's just people that's in tune with it. And, you know, I don't know. It's it, it's a strange world to be into. Like, I always feel like whenever I always think about, like, marketing and shit, mm-hmm. it always take away from my music because I, cause I'm, I'm not really thinking about the craft no more. I'm thinking about what I'm, you know? Mm-hmm. But it's kind of necessary to do it because... You don't want to... Hey, you about to say something, like I was going to say something, but I can't remember what I was going to say. Oh, all right. It's all good. So, I'll just... No worries. <laughs> not, not say anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No worries, man. But, no, nah, yeah, I feel you on that, man. But it's like... I mean... I mean, you doing it because you love it, but then you can only hold on to that for so long. Because we've met. Uh, but I don't know. What's the time limit, though, bro? What's the cap- time? Right, like, I think example. you know in your heart when bro. you fucked up. Listen, you know what I mean? Like Remember Catherine's yeah. story? So we, so this is lady that Joseph, um, my wonderful yes, ex professor, yeah, Catherine Barant. Yeah, everybody go support her. She's a wonderful <laughs> painter. Yeah, and but, she's just a light in this world. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So like with Catherine, you know how she said that that moment when she fell asleep while painting she realized that like she had to really like do make something. a change make a change yeah. you know she was she was successful she was living in houston right something like that you yeah know, so she was working and she had a gallery that was like show, showing her work yeah and she had an art dealer i think she had an art dealer who was like you know she was doing well yeah she was an artist full-time and her and her husband split and she was supporting her and two boys you know like they were doing good and um, she was just spending so much time painting and just taking care of the kids that she was really neglecting herself. And she was doing things that subconsciously she knew she could sell without realizing it. It wasn't really about like her being a, like becoming a better yeah, painter, better painter yeah. or exploring like something new. And that, like she, the moment she realized that was when she fell asleep when she was painting in her garage studio. Okay. And she woke up with like the paintbrush like on the floor and she was like kind of nodded and she was like, whoa, like how could I fall asleep painting? painting. Like I'm supposed to be giving all of myself right yeah. now and I just fucking fell asleep in the middle of my work. So that must mean that something's missing. Like I can't neglect this anymore. I can't push this back anymore. And she said, I want to go back to school. Mm-hmm. So she, um, yeah, so she moved to Maryland, Baltimore, actually Baltimore City. She's a white lady. Her and her two sons moved to Baltimore City, and she enrolled in the master's program at MICA, Maryland Institute College of Art. And yeah, and then after she graduated, I can't, I don't remember the exact, uh, of the exact order of events, but she ended up as a professor over there and touched the lives of many more kids, including myself. She was dope. Uh, yeah. And we're gonna meditate, Catherine. I'm gonna come over and we're gonna meditate. I just got my car back a couple weeks ago, so. That's why, but 
Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, that goes to show it's like, you know, you just, when you stretch it out for that long, you know, she was in how. But she was still financially successful, though. Yeah. And still, she wasn't really successful in her work. On her, yeah. So Which it's is like, you know, so when I think crazy. when I think about stories like that, that just has me just thinking, like, damn, I know I may be feeling this at this point. Right now, I may be going hard for this. But, like, how would this really feel within, like, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Bro. 10, 11, 12 years down the line? And you know? when I think about that, it's like when we mapped out the podcast schedule on the, on the calendar. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the time feels like you already lived it. Yeah. When you schedule shit out and there's no more unknown, you already know what you have to do. This shit feels like you already lived it. Yeah. Like you just move yeah. accordingly. Right. Like once you got a plan, that shit is like butter. Butter. Yeah. And you constantly forget that, which is why you get stressed out. Mm. But all you gotta do is just remind yourself of that. Like if I if I set it up, everything will fall into place. And the then bed. like when we did that, surprisingly enough, I honestly felt like time was moving a little slow. Yeah. Like we put I felt down, like I was living in the moment. The of last of, of last week that we didn't push it over it was just like dang like with all the episodes we did it literally felt like that length you know what i mean it feels like you're a little organized you know it was just it was just interesting really i feel like a lot of people need to do that and like you know camille always says she doesn't like to plan her life or like to like schedules it's essential you don't have a choice you need to <laughs> like if you wake up and you don't know what you're gonna do that means you're not gonna do shit yeah or you're gonna like, you know, <laughs> you know either I mean? that, or you're not, or you're not gonna be motivated to really do much because it wasn't planned. Yeah. You know. I I agree and then I disagree. Like like, I like I agree with like like today, right? I knew I was gonna come here. Yeah. And do the podcast, but I ain't know what's gonna talk about. You know true. what I'm saying? I, yeah. I I didn't know you had your own spot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like very like true, I very didn't true. know. So I like the spontaneity of it, but I like knowing that I have a destination. No. Oh, okay, you know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's like I don't want to know every detail. Like I didn't ask you what we was gonna talk about. Yeah, I didn't ask yeah. too many questions. I was like, all right. I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do this joint, and mm-hmm. then you like, bet. So, you know, like yeah. I, I like this. I like to keep it spontaneous. Yeah, I like it too. You know, just like with um, a little room, a little yeah. room for you to like be like, mm, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, if, when it comes to be more though, <laughs> I need to know everything where I'm at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, for real. Yeah, you in Baltimore, like when you right? hear it's a whole, it's like a, <laughs> it's like when you enter Baltimore through ninety five and you see like the whole setup. It's like it's like it's like it's, like, it's, it's in its own dome. It's like when you hit the button. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like dang, it's like you just start like a whole nother simulation, bro. Yeah. But well, females all right though. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I feel you though. It's always good to go into things a little optimistic. It's a little fun doing that, you yeah. know. But um. But I do agree. You do gotta have like some type of. Yeah, depending on what it bullshit. is, you just don't know, yeah. you know. And I appreciate you. You're like, you know, you actually that's trust. You had a little trust in us a little bit yeah, for you to really true. come over here and not like you know just. Not really, ex- not know what to expect, you know. Have you, you didn't seen eat. the podcast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, I watched okay. it. So you kind of had like a feel for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, so yeah. You got a brother, right? He he be on it. His... Oh my, that was that was my yeah. cousin. Oh, that's your cousin. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. People okay. always man. Yeah, y'all y'all look alike, man. <laughs> Ever since <laughs> I was a little kid, Simon used to live with us, oh. and they we always felt like brothers. I mean, we are pretty much. Man. And um, he, people always used to think we were blood brothers, so it feed oh, into okay. it more. You think so? Yeah, man. He got glasses, right? Yeah, I wear glasses too, but I'm not wearing them right now. But, but yeah, but he, people used to say, "Man, you guys look like brothers." Da 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 da. And when me and Atabi, my actual sister, when we would walk around, they would be like, "Are you guys twins?" And that shit used to make me so mad because I was two. I'm two years older, yeah. so I always used to feel like pissed. I was like, "Fuck you, mean twins? I'm older. Twin. Can't you tell?" Twin. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Man, man. Uh, you have any siblings? Yeah, I got a younger sister, and you know, my little cousins is like brothers and sisters to me too. So, yeah, you know. yeah, same. Yeah. How old is she? Uh, nineteen, twenty. So she's the same age as I told you, but my sister. She yeah. graduated twenty seventeen. She graduated twenty sixteen. Yeah, after oh, okay. me. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Hold up, you went to um Rose. Rose. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. 
I learned the whole road about, man. What year you graduated? 15. Are you? Okay, so you graduated. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. We all 15. <laughs> 2015. Okay, okay. But, yeah. Dang, bro, I feel bad now. I, was, I thought you was younger than us, bro. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. What? I, feel I don't like know, bro. I feel old, like an old man. Nah. Nah, man. We both, we, we, we both shared the spot here, so, yeah. yeah that's, that's tight. But, um, but, yeah. So, I mean, like, so what's your plan for, like, the future with music? So, like, where do you, where do you see yourself within, like, the next couple of years or months with your craft? Oh. It's the worst question. I mean, like, well, I mean, it's hard. I mean, it's hard to really do that. I mean, because I mean, I would answer it roughly now. I would just. Yeah, it could be simple with like one or two words, really. I mean, but I mean. No, it's not a bad question. It's no, 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 I mean that's a hard question to answer. Well, like, I, I try. Uh, you said where I see myself with my craft like next month. Being like, class. I mean, it could be like within a month. Like, years. It's, it doesn't even have to be like anything tangent. I mean, that's like you know tied into like what you're doing now. Just kind of like where you would like to be, you know. Okay, it can be that. I'm gonna give you both, where where I where I think I'm gonna be and where I would like to be. All right, right? cool. And so like since I've been home, right, I don't have uh, I don't have my studio with me. Like all the only thing I had was my microphone. You know Josh Twyman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so he he got to set up at his joint. So I brought my microphone down and I have it set up at his joint. But the only difference is. I would say for me being Atlanta and being here is I'm not on my own time. I'm yeah. on other people's time. So yeah. like, he got a life. I can't be in his house. He not there working. Yeah. You know so what you saying? can't record when you want to record. I can't. I can't. I can't create when I want to create. Yeah. You know, I don't have my. I don't have a work environment right now to okay. really create. Yeah. So, what I do is, I just drive around in my car and freestyle. I just like record voice memos and, and try to get it in. You know, yeah. and try to come up with ideas. But I've been inspired lately, though, bro. Uh, I've been inspired a lot, man. Like, yeah. Wait, is it the new music that's dropping, or is it like the energy that you feel is going on with the DMV? Like, what's, what's man? What's nah, pushing like, just, just, uh, man, it's it's an energy, bro. Like, like, it's a um. That joint, that joint, stop every thirty minutes or something. Something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Must be doing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then you gotta press it you again. Gotta press it again, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta upgrade to the new mix, the GH5 the, or the, the GH4. The, the GH4. Would you could trade it in and just pay the difference? Ooh, that would be sweet. Yeah. That'd be cool. That'd be really, really cool. Yeah, probably. We could, but we could probably do that. Yeah. But trade them both in for one. Is that for right? one? The heck yeah, I'll do that. But I'm not even sure how much we're going to get for it. For your T3i. For two, two, three hours? Bro. We'll probably get 300. 150 We'll be piece. lucky. We'll be lucky. Nah. I don't even think. Well, maybe 150 yeah, a piece. What? Maybe yeah, 150 a piece. For 200. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. It's like, I think about GameStop. You know when you go to GameStop? Yeah, I was, oh, I was yeah, yeah, yeah. You know when you go to GameStop, yeah, bro? Yeah. GameStop be bamming. You can buy the game yeah. right there, $60, and you can return it right in that second. They'd be like, you can get a dollar back. $4, maybe. If, you, $4. if they fuck with you, $4. Bro, that's what I be thinking, son. They got me traumatized. And they be like, four thirty seven, like $0.37 cent matters. They bro, just, they would do you so dirty. GameStop don't care. They don't care. It's so wild. I but, heard that niggas be trading in like 50 games for like 20 bucks. Exactly. <laughs> Yo, that's so bro, they would trade in for like 20 bucks. catalogs of games, bro. Like, that's like 20 games in each category. Yeah. And they would be like, all right, bet. Here's your dollar. <laughs> <laughs> it could be iconic games, too. They don't, give a fuck. they don't care. You'll have a better chance selling them on eBay as a bundle anyway, though. But, uh, but yeah. So that's how I be doing that shit. Uh, but yeah, man. Wait, did you even finish the question? Where you like, see yourself? No, 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 no. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Or so like the. Talking about oh um. Yeah, you were talking about how you right now and you being here, you don't have your studio, so like. Oh you know, yeah, yeah. Crazy, nah, I'm not right? complaining though. I was yeah. talking to my brother Jules, right? Mm -hmm. And he was saying, and we was just talking about like, I gotta create a different way. Like, like he's saying, he's more innovative than creative. 
and and I kind of agree with that. Like mm. like you gotta learn how to create what you got. So so you so I could have a motherfucking like Jay Z, right? He he recorded four 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 on like microphones like these. You know, he didn't record right. he didn't record on no high end microphones. And if you listen to the music, I mean it's mixed well, but it's it's muffled. Mm. And like I see what you mean. Yeah. Okay. So if you listen, but but he said it was more intimate for him to create that way. He said he used to wake up in the morning, go in the closet, and just like. Record like he said he's waking up in the morning at four four forty four in the morning. Wow. And he would get ideas and he would just record them down. I thought that was related to like you know because him and Beyonce got four tatted on him or something like oh, that, right? It might have something yeah. to do with all that. Dang, but that would be crazy though. Yeah, if he yeah. he because I know he got that tat on him and they she got it tatted too. And then him waking up at four forty four. Right. Probably right. have a whole secret society you don't even know about, like a village underground or something. Maybe. <laughs> that, the Bro. King, you know. Like What's that? What? How that? How that go? How that verse go? What's better than one one billion there? Two. It's two. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Especially when they sound the same as you. <laughs> They're John twenty nine percent. Yes. You see, hey, bro, I appreciate you. Bro. I, I seen like, it was on thirty seven you know, three like, minutes ago. I, I, I said, I damn, said. hold on. This drink will cut off. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but nah, man. Uh, yeah, man. But yeah, nah, with the Jay Z. That's, I mean, you see, there you go. Like, you said, you, you was talking about resources. So what resources exactly are you looking for? Is that pertaining more so to, like, videos? Or is that, like, with, What you like, mean, like, like people to do videos? Because, like, you know, earlier how you said you was trying to do an album. And what, what were you trying to title it again? Uh, sta- uh, Soul in the Station. Yeah, Soul in the Station. Yeah. And you saying that the reason why you're doing the... Um, the station uh, demos. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing that is because, like, you're just really just trying to put stuff out. So like, well, not the, just put it out, but like, but like, I'm still going hard with it. But I, but these songs, but the way I'm at mentally, mentally with it, yeah, it's different than how yeah, you're it's different than how I would, with how would, exactly. Yeah. So it's not like I'm just putting out bullshit. Yeah, yeah. And like, I just want people to, I just want you to see my name. Like now, I'm, I'm putting my heart in this shit. I'm sure, I'm sure. And yeah. and you know, it. but but I also also wanna. Uh, I don't wanna um take too long to put out music. Yeah. I feel like I feel like I take too long. Mm-hmm. I feel like. I feel like people want to, I feel like I have a lot to say and I, and I make a lot of music, but I just don't put it out, and you know? When you don't put it out, when you don't, if you don't put something out in that moment, if you're, if you're not behind it, like, no matter if it's the Mona Lisa, nobody will fuck with it because that, like, that feeling is not there. You were talking about it earlier and I meant to say something then, but like. It came back to me. Yeah. yeah. Like with that thing right there, mm-hmm. honestly, for real, for real, I could have been finished that. But like, I know that I'm really not in a place to fuck with it right now. Like if I were to put a little shit together and just like, you know, just finish it and try and see if I could get it hung somewhere. Yeah, it would be done, but it would always fall flat because I'm not with it. Like I'm not in it. I'm not woven into it. Like, you know, so. And even if if like everybody else, like even if everybody else was to say, uh, Shit is fire. This shit is crazy. Yeah. How did you do this? You would you would always look at it and be like, it's dead. It, Dang, it's, yeah. It's not. It doesn't fulfill you. You know. Yeah. And that's one of my fears about music. Is like, it's like somebody. Like I don't have fears of people saying my shit suck. Like, mm-hmm. if they don't fuck with it, they don't fuck with it. You know, no artist. That's the reality of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You can't control people yeah. to that extent. And everybody no likes what. different music. Exactly. Like, like the way I look at music is like people listen to the artists who they feel like is a part of them, right? So if you don't relate to me as a person, you probably not going to relate to my music. Okay. Even if the shit is fire, you just going to be like, "Oh, it's cool." It's cool because you don't feel me as a person. You don't, you don't, you don't relate to me. Yeah. You know. So I look at every artist like, like the Kendricks, the Coles, Big Crit, Marvin Gaye. Crit. That's so crazy. You mentioned that's his my name nigga. Next to Marvin Gaye. Oh man, you know. Oh, oh yeah, the man. Oh, man. Spooky Black Corbin, like I, all these like all these artists is like a part of me. Oh. You know. That yeah. list is crazy. And <laughs> he says this no, is crazy. Yeah. No, nah, but, that's but you, like a, when you that's the definition of diversity. Yeah, oh, really, pretty really much. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Really, you, you said Spooky <laughs> Black in the same name with Marvin, Marvin Gaye, Gaye Big Crit. Crit. The same he's name as Big Crit. Crit. Spooky Black well, is lit Spooky though. Black is cool. He's cool as shit. That <laughs> song was people thought it was a joke. That was a dope ass song. Yeah, the album. I didn't hear the whole album. I just heard the song. Oh, okay, that's okay. the one where he's singing the white dude with the band. That nigga. Without you. Without Ooh, you. That shit is Dog. fire. That shit is so fire. Yeah. Yeah, Spooky Black, come on the show. Come on the show. Spooky Black. I'm just sitting. We need a flower. 
Yeah. Shit, that would be lit. But yeah, man. Damn. That's interesting. So I speaking like, of diversity, give us some background on like where your family is from. What's your background like? Uh, um. Well, my dad from uh, he's from Capitol Heights, uh, that area. My mom is from um, Lanham. Uh, grand, my grandparents is like from different parts. So like grandparents like South Carolina. Uh, uh, southeast, um, uh, deep, v- deep country like Virginia, like Jerry, Virginia, okay. uh, and then like on my grandma, on my dad's grandma side, um, Indian, you know, like Native American. Yeah. So, so that's why my hair that's curly. Her, yeah. yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. So I, I mean, slavery, bro. I don't know, like I don't know the everything, you yeah. know. <laughs> but yeah, what about y'all? That's a very real answer. <laughs> no, nah, that's real. Yeah. Because it's like a lot of people got mixed into this because yeah. of that, you know. And then it's like you know, <laughs> they can easily say where they're from. <laughs> you know what I mean? Without That's some no real shit. Problem. These white people could be here for like <laughs> since Ellis Island was full of Italians and Irish people, and those same Italian and Irish people still know that they're Italian and Irish to this day. Yeah. And they got their St. Patty's Day, and they got their fucking pasta and lasagna and all that shit their berea in the in the fucking supermarket yeah. and where is our jello fries and injera and teh and everything our could for i don't see that shit when i go in the safeway mm, so fix no. that motherfucker yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you feel me and it's like we all know it's sad we gotta live through it because at the yep. end of the day <laughs> can we change that no nah, man I mean, oh, we, we can, can only change what's ahead of us. But you can't reality, change can't anything. Really you change, just build it. Like, you just with those, build it. With those mindsets are on. History, bro. Like, I, just, I get on YouTube, and I just, like, watch videos. And, like, uh, I get on YouTube, and I just, like, watch videos of, like, uh, of, like, all the, um, like, conspiracies. Yeah, you know? yeah. Of, like, yeah, yeah, yeah like, like, where we from, and, like, if this guy was black, or if he was white, or, oh, yeah. or if, or if, if we even in America or like just you, you know I know it's, like it's stuff. Yeah, I know it goes it, crazy yeah, man. yeah it goes you, crazy you, yeah yeah you, you, you there too crazy and then you be thinking you be like damn white people would do some weird shit like that and you but then you wake up tomorrow and you be like nah nigga I'm tripping <laughs> uh, you, or, or, you, or you be like where am I you know it's always yeah. the where am I that, that get you uh-huh. fucked up and you know I never feel comfortable talking to people about this shit cause then Cause, cause it, and then, and then, I don't, and then I don't explain. I, I never explained the video right. So like, I talk to Madlock right, uh-huh. and like, I call him all excited. I be like, I be like, yo, bro, you gotta watch this video, right? Uh-huh. These niggas talking about like, like, like the history and like where we really from, and we, and all this shit. And then he watch the joint, and he'll be like, nigga, the niggas tripping, like, <laughs> like, tripping. like yeah, 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 yeah. And I be like, bruh. I don't believe in the shit, but I'm saying but it's though the information how they yeah, like yeah, putting yeah. everything together. Right, right. Like how can all this connect? Like, bro, <laughs> how like, can all of it and, and some of it not be true? Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, and then, yeah. the, and then the information. Then you gotta figure out what's true, what's, what's true, not. and what's not. And that's where the it's too much, bro. bro. It's too and, much. And, like, 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 like I wish the answers was just exactly. I wish and, niggas didn't lie. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? like and not even just that. I mean, like that's what people truly believe in too. Like, yeah. and think about it. Think about it. Like, and like I was thinking about this yesterday. Or like two days ago, like XXS X is going to be down in history. He's never gonna be forgotten, like ever. I don't think he's ever gonna be forgotten within music because, like, have you seen his recent music video, the sad yeah, joke that the recent song, music video? He he's just, dead. Did you see his recent music video that dropped two days ago? He dropped a music video. He like, didn't drop shit. No, no. That nigga is you dead. You see the music video Wait, that he dropped he two days ago? Oh, okay, okay. I was gonna say like, <laughs> damn, y'all. Like, what is y'all talking about? <laughs> like, <laughs> people, people, yeah. like, with his death, <laughs> you know, even like Muhammad, like with his death, <laughs> he, <laughs> my cousin Muhammad, he played football for Bowie. You know, the tall one. Yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, oh, I'm bro, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm going into conspiracies because he was talking about conspiracies. Oh, and like with Triple X and his like his whole thing, like there's so many different conspiracies going on because like there was a video of his life left lifeless body and stuff and like you know how people were saying oh he got shot in the neck and all that stuff and they see blood. So people, yeah, it's not like the movie, bro. bro that's what I'm saying. That that's too that too. But people don't want to think about that. So people are going to like you know you know how X before how he was like heavy on to like 
all this different like he had a like a vast mind so like you know the things that he would talk about with like really like you know correlating to death and him being sacrificed so people were all like really pointing all that and like stirring it up together and just making like so many different conspiracies it's crazy it's all over youtube and stuff now there's so many people who who like don't believe he's dead there's so many people like with the whole sad video that kind of like plays with like the whole illuminati thing it's just crazy so it's like you should see the video like you'll really you'll really like it's a phenomenal video but um but yeah man conspiracies you can't blame how people think like because they be they be true as shit yeah. They they feel like like what mommy like he was talking when he was talking to me about the X thing like he, he was, that he believe yeah some people believe he's alive whoa. bro there's people okay, who believe Muhammad. he's alive Muhammad Muhammad I mean, I bro he's dead he, he was dog was like he was like and like yeah bro was it was sad bro it's all over the internet the video, like, damn if they bring him back bro the doctors deserve it like, bro so, Muhammad yeah, get it together <laughs> what were you gonna say. But, and then, you know, like, so you know Kurt Cobain, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so people believe that. Oh, repeat what you said. You know Kurt Cobain, right? Yeah. So people, people believe that his wife, um, Courtney. Yeah, Courtney did. Courtney, she, yeah, she, she, yeah, she, she killed him. Yeah. She killed him. Mm-hmm. And and um, I fought with Kurt Cobain. Yeah. I also know that he, you know, dealt with mental illness. Very true. Drugs. Yeah. And and I don't know him personally, but I heard that he was trying to make a change. And and you know I wouldn't put it past somebody to to do that. You know, I don't know. It's just a conspiracy. I was I was, no, you know, bro, I was no, looking continue, at yeah yeah cause I was, yeah. Bro, all that stuff is interesting because it's like I watch shows like Prison Break, right? Oh, Prison Break. Oh is yeah, yeah, I fuck with that shit. And like I'm not sure if y'all picked up on it, but the way the like from season one to to like three, mm-hmm. and the way like the whole idea concept of the show just like took a turn by like the fifth six seven season bro it's like it just went so deep into it and it just had you thinking like bro if they got shit like this coming up even if it's for television or whatever like it will have you thinking like it's something going on it's something something operating you're so you're saying like the foundation of that show came from real life like the no, like as far as just the, like the ideas like the ideas that, that go yeah, into yeah, yeah, it yeah, came from the like, real like, world. I, I don't want to ruin it, but I'm gonna just go ahead so you can have some, uh, a little yeah, bit more context. I, I know the show pretty so much like, anyway. Pretty so much towards yeah. the end, there's this thing that they're chasing. It's called Scylla, mm-hmm. and this is like this yeah, chip, yeah. Yep. and it's like it's this chip that like can, like that can like do some wild shit. Has information on like so many different things, and it's like three different branches. Of like people going for it, so it's the people who broke out of prison who's trying to get it, mm-hmm. and they're working with like like the CIA, like FBI type shit, and then there's like this hierarchy of people who are just like let's think of it like the um, rich, like, like super wealthy, like the more than wealthy type shit, you yeah. know, it's like on a whole nother level. Wow. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. like really like on some like Illuminati shit, mm-hmm. you know, like for real, and it's like them, and it's just like the way that they move in. And the way that they're able to like pretty much hide in plain sight doing this thing and doing doing things like this makes you think that that's think really like, going bro, on. Yeah, it makes me think like stuff like this can really happen. You know, like I'm yeah. sure it does. Like the people causing the change and then somehow they just disappeared and they're able to like patch it up and like all that stuff. Like I can believe like I can come up with a quick ex- conspiracy now. Like you know, they they could be people at a higher part um higher um whatever. Um, maybe had somebody go in into um, uh, 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 let's say go into the hood and probably play undercover for like five years and then not five years let's say two make it more realistic two years or whatever and then you know they build a connection with killers and then they go ahead and rely the information to the higher power they go ahead and formulate some something to go on all right bet he into this okay cool let's do that you know just like just yeah, like that, yeah, bro. Yeah. It's, 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 it's insane. Have it's, you it's ever really seen insane. the movie Eyes Wide Shut? Bro, yeah. we watched that show like when was it? Like yeah. two months ago? Yeah. yeah. That yeah. mo that motherfucking movie right there, man. <laughs> yo, <laughs> yo, I'm not gonna lie. I, I, you listen to Frank Ocean? Yeah. Listen to Frank Hell Ocean. Yeah. You know how he had that line? Been trying to picture with my eyes wide shut, yeah, yeah, yeah. shooting like Stanley. You know that. Yeah. yeah. So I heard that line. I saw the movie. I was about to share. I said, "Oh shit, this is probably what he was talking about." Mm. I had no idea about the movie. Yeah, so it. imagine watching that joint blind, not knowing that it's what? about to be a motherfucking sex cult. I didn't know, bro. I was following it like yeah. without no preview, no motherfucking That's expectations. Damn. I was just like, 
I remember he went to, I'm like, I'm like, damn. I'm like, damn. Oh, he, he about to like, what was, it's about to be like an orgy party. Motherfucker walked in there. I was like, oh, now nah, this shit different. Yeah. This, this, this part with the Illuminati, like, yeah, on some, like, some real shit. Yeah, yeah like, exactly. Exactly. transmitting other souls with the sex. I don't know. That's Yeah, you know, bro. Yeah. That stuff happens. It has to. I wish, hopefully, in the future. I think that's how Stanley Cooper probably wanted people to see the movie with no previews. Yeah. Just, like, turn it on. And I hope I'll have the luxury to do that type of shit. Exactly. Like, my shit will be that available. You got Rotten Tomatoes now. Nah, I mean, like, just, it will be available when I put it out. Everybody will watch it so quick. Oh, I you know, know what I mean? Huh? Yeah, that's what we doing. Film. Yeah, that's what filmmaking yeah, is. Yeah, filmmaking is. That's what we trying okay, to okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, movies, man. Feature yeah. films. Yeah, man. I'll be, I'll, yeah, I'm you know what's crazy, film. man? I be telling a lot of people I don't just because you can catch the vibe mm. off people, like especially hood niggas, like they always want the same type of video. Oh, yeah. So that shit always <laughs> be like. Remember for a while it was like everybody wanted everybody a video. Everybody just wanted music videos. But I'm like, like damn, nah, that shit take like, too much time for me to yeah, be done with my was sword. Yeah, the time. You know, then, like us not really being available is awesome. But hey. If you put in, if you got a little change, or if you're really close with us, we can get something happen. Hell yeah, we'll do a fire. I actually yeah. want to listen to some of your music before we close out, because we got about seven minutes left, seven yeah, and a half. Yeah, yeah. So, go ahead. what song would you, do you have a hard drive or a USB yeah, with any yeah, music? Yeah. Yeah, you want Apple go Music? Go ahead, pull up that studio. Go ahead. Keep saying studio, yeah, bro. Good, bro. Station, Station, Station uh, Sessions. All right, back. Let's hear it. I'm going to play it. Um, this genre here, you know, Josh Swamin? Yeah. Josh, yeah. uh, um, mixed all this? Nah, Maybe mix. Uh, I'm, I'm mixed it all. But, okay, okay. But Twyman, um, Let me we, see me cover. and Twyman, uh, made this beat right here called Lost Oh, that shit's hard. Go ahead, bro. How do we, how oh, do dang. Hold on. Wait, wait. Let me play it off my phone because it's gonna, okay. it's probably gonna mess up with the audio, but it's all good. Let no, I paused it anyway. All right, hold on. Bro, this cover is hard, though. Where are you at? That's all the dudes, bro. That's all the dudes. This is my man, Scuba. Bro, this is Scuba, Twine, me. You know, I got my hair braided. Zay. Yo, your hair is wild. Oh, shit. Lil Mike, my man, Breezy. Zay, Jordan. That's what's up. That shit hard. I want to say something quick, though. Yeah. Shout out. Uh, It's Sunflower. It's hot. Yeah, yeah. Station demo too, bro. Uh, it's on the way. I've been inspired. Cause it's, it's like six minutes left, so I just wanna say some. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, closing remarks. Uh, uh. All right, bro. I forgot. Um. Oh yeah, sta station demo two. Uh, well, station demo one. You know, everybody fuck with that. It's out now. Station demo two on the way. Uh, I think the inspiration is gonna be more poetic. You know, uh, more. Like this joint was more dark and grunge. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of there's a lot of perspective. You good, you good. It was a lot of um perspective and uh in this joint, not everything I'm saying is, is my personal story, but it's close to me, you know, it's people I know and stuff like that. And um Station Demo two, I wanted to be more poetic, I wanted to be more uh, of a different aesthetic to it, like the music and and the way I approach it, and even the way I'm rapping in my voice, like I feel like I was a lot, I was aggressive, or I was different. This joint, this joint, I've been inspired by like this sunflower, you know, and, and uh, yeah, man, it changed my whole mood, you know. So I, so Station Demo Two gonna be different than Station Demo One, and Station Demo Three is gonna be different. And hopefully, by the time I'm done creating these, these demos, I hit like a peak. I had like a peak point to where it's like, it matches up perfectly. Like people is paying attention, my pen is in the right place, and I can execute the idea at the perfect point, you know? That's like my ultimate, to go back to where Aline was at, that's like my ultimate uh, goal, goal. goal, yeah, and, so, uh, and yeah, so. Let me go ahead, uh, yeah, should I, wait, Lost in Peace is the one with you and John. Oh yeah, so go ahead, intro this track real quick. Oh yeah, uh, Intro this track, so. Yeah. So last summer, uh, me and Twyman, um, what's the name of the song? Real quick? Lost in Peace. Okay. Uh, last summer, me and Twyman had, um, basically, uh, you gonna is a speaker? Huh? Is yeah, it speaker? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. All right, but, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So last summer, me and Twyman, uh, had made this beat, right? And um, basically, uh, I was just in the studio. I was like, I was like, kill, bro. He had like played this sample, 
and I was like, damn, bro, this sample hard. And um, basically, we went to the, had like guitar samples. We were just playing with shit, and we came up with it. And then um, I didn't come up with the lyrics until a little bit later, like just rapping about. Uh, Drug addiction, revenge, uh, and and the thought processes of people close to me, you know, mm. of like just being lost. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So and when you know. No, I mean, hey, me, yeah. that's how you really know that it's personal. Yeah, yeah. You know, and like when you're really spilling it out on a format like that, that's when you know, like that's your calling for real, because you're not doing it with, you're not painting, you're not drawing. You know, you're not like you know portraying it through you know through a lens, like, yeah. saying it verbally. You know, you're rapping it. So like, yeah, and I can tell like this is something that's like re- really personal for you. You know, yeah, like, yeah, you for know, sure, so for sure. That's what's up, bro. That's yeah, good. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and play "Lost in Peace," Andre Wisdom. Twyman, uh, produces 
B? Yeah, yeah. That, that don't, don't fire. fire. Good luck, bro. That don't fire. I don't. Good luck, bro. Fire. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit is so crisp. Like, yeah, fire, yeah, bro. fire, 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 yeah. fire, fire. Yeah. Bro, that was like a wonderful way to end it. <laughs> Low key. Actually, like that song. Low key, nah, man. Thank for real. Man. Appreciate y'all. Yeah, man. It's Andre Wisdom, man. Wisdom, wisdom. Y'all get some wisdom, <laughs> yeah. bro, man. Anything else you want to say before we head out of here? Yeah. Uh, last, uh, last minute. Yeah, yeah man. Station bro. demo two on the way. Uh, yeah, man. Thank y'all for having me in this month. Hey, bro. Uh, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Coming, wisdom. Hey. hey, man. Let's close All right, y'all. 200 podcast. We out. Peace.